Okay, so what is this ionic bond? Ionic bond. Let's take a look. So, I mean, first of all, it's going to involve ions. Well, what, what's an ion? An ion is a charged um, atom. So it's got somehow a different number of electrons than we would have worked out for a neutral atom. And I think the best way to, to describe this is by way of an example. And so we're going to take sodium and we're going to take chlorine. This is a classic uh, example of an ionic material. And they're from opposite sides of the periodic table. Sodium, in fact, on the far left column there, column one, and chlorine right beside the um, noble gases, um, column 17. So sodium has an uh, atomic number of 11, and chlorine has an atomic number of 17. So let's write out the electron configuration. We've got 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, that's 10, right? We only need one more, so we've got 3s1. Chlorine, and so what is that? Well, another way of writing that actually, right, is those core electrons belonging to um, neon. Okay, that's neon. So really, this is neon plus just this irritating little 1s, or sorry, 3s electron. So if, if sodium could just get rid of that, it would have a stable octet. It would be isoelectronic with neon. Chlorine. Well, what's chlorine? Chlorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, um, 3s2, so that's 12, 3p6. <clears throat> oh, correction. I got ahead of myself there. So we've got uh, that's 10, 12, and we need five more, 3p5, right? So, and, and what's that? Well, I, I just about made that mistake myself there. This is really close to. Um, stable octet you know it so the 3s2 3p6 would be stable octet this is but one electron away from looking like argon one electron away or deficient from argon so isn't that irritating for a little neutral chlorine there and so I like to think about the ionic bond in two logical steps Okay, so step one is achieving low energy. Um, I don't know why I put an E on the end of that. That's just low energy. I guess I was going to start spelling energy. <laughs> achieving low energy. And so what happens is, with our example, go back to our example, sodium, if it can, will give up an electron. Okay plus electron minus, but that renders sodium positive. So you end up with a positive ion. And I'll just give you a little piece of terminology here. That's called a cation, okay, a positive ion. <clears throat> and in fact, now, so this is a low energy or octet stability. But it can't just give up an electron as it uh, willy-nilly just, hey, I'm going to give up an electron. It needs to give the electron to something. The electron has to go somewhere. So if it's in the presence of, say, chlorine, and chlorine can then accept that electron, chlorine will happily become chlorine minus because then it's going to be isoelectronic with argon. And I'll give you the term for this. This is called an anion. Negative. A negative ion is an anion. So that's the first step, achieving low energy by obtaining octet stability through, what was this? This was the transfer of an electron. Okay, Different from covalent bonding involving the sharing. This is a transfer of an electron. That's really the, in my, uh, that's the way I view it, the first logical step. And then what do you have? And then you have the charge attraction 
or Coulombic attraction, if you will, between the opposite charge uh, ions, between oppositely charged ions. And let me sketch out for you what this might look like in two dimensions. So we've got some negatively charged ions. Okay. Negatively charged ions. I'm just drawing here a cartoon depiction. It's uh, you may recognize a slice through sodium chloride. Okay. And I'll leave it there. And then okay, so actually sorry, these are these are chlorine minus. Okay, usually we put Often for humans, it's easier to look at the larger one, and the anions are usually larger because they've accepted electrons. And then we're going to fit these little sodiums in here. Sodium, okay, so sodium is positive. Sodium, sodium, they fit in like this. And this is just a two dimensional slice. And it shows that they're attracting one another, okay. So this, you know, these, all these positive cations are attracting these negative anions. But here's where another difference between covalent bonding and ionic bonding. There's this charge attraction, okay, charge attraction. I'm gonna use the yellow color for that. You get this charge attraction between all oppositely charged ions. But it's not used up, this charge attraction, this electrostatic attraction is not used up because of the presence of these anions around this cation. There's in fact a, a you know, there's a charge attraction here between these these um, ions that are further away. I mean, the, these nearest neighbor, the atoms that are very close to this cation are most strongly attracted, but it's like a general attraction. It's not specific between two ion, uh, between two, uh, two nuclei, as we saw for covalent bonding. So covalent bonding, involves shared electrons. Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Excuse me for that. I'm sorry. Let me just get rid of that. Um, ionic bonding involves the transfer. I was just testing to see if you're paying attention. Transfer of uh, electrons and the, um, the bonding is turned non-directional. Okay. I'll, I'll make a bad joke here. <laughs> Sometimes you, well, you, you, okay, you go to a party or something and you're the popular person or you see the popular person and everyone wants to hang out with that person. Okay, that's ionic bonding. And then um, co covalent bonding, right, between specific nuclei. That's getting married. Um, anyway, <laughs> I don't, anyway, um, there you go. So it's non-directional. It's between all the oppositely charged ions. Um, and that's, uh, that's it. That's a good look at ionic bonding. Thanks.